Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman, and I'm the technical director here at Pure Storage for VMware Solutions. And I'm here with... Don Kerouac, I'm a technical marketing engineer for Flash Array, focusing on Active Cluster. Great, and the topic of today is something called VMSC, mm -hmm. or Virtual Metro Storage Cluster. Okay. Uh, and so, what is VMSC, right? This, this topic gets tossed around a lot, and in reality, what it is, is it's a collection of different features, right? Right, it's a, it's a reference architecture, if you will. It's not a product that you can buy, but it's, it combines stretch compute, stretch storage, um, and then HA into something they call VMSC. So let's, let's dive into those, those different things a little bit. What is, what is stretch compute? Like, why do you have it? What's so, the point? So really, it's, it's the notion of, of, of creating um, additional fault domains so that if you know, a, a data center rack fails or maybe a data center itself fails, you're creating separation between sites so that, that there's at least one component that's outside of that failure domain that, that, that keeps running. Exactly, right? It's basically instead of having all eight of your hosts in the same failure domain, you have four in one and four in another. Right. So if that entire domain fails, right, you still have surviving hosts in that cluster. Okay. Exactly. And for that to matter, you need you need some kind of storage that also kind of spans those two sites. So traditionally, uh, you know, VMware would be deployed, um, you know, in a, in a single site with a shared storage infrastructure that also only resides at that site. Um, the problem being that still, you know, from a data center perspective, a single point of failure. So you needed a way to kind of stretch outside that and get to a second uh, site or a second fault domain, and that's where Active Cluster kind of comes into the picture. We can stretch storage that way. Exactly. On the Pure Storage Flash Array, we have an Active Active Replication solution called Active Cluster. Mm -hmm. right? It allows you to have a volume on one array and say, you know what, I want this volume to also be on this array. And so either one of those arrays at the exact same time can service reads or writes for that volume. Essentially, you're stretching it, right? You're giving, oh, now it has paths on this array too. And so if one of those arrays fails, you can still service data, right, at the exact point in time of that failure. Right, so to the hosts that, that form the MSC, they, they really just see additional paths to the same LUN that they've probably already you know, seen at one site. When we add active clusters to the mix, they just see some additional paths that, that show up. There's really not much more to it. Exactly, if you have an entire failure domain go down, right, meaning it brings down half your hosts, it brings down one of your two arrays, you still have the surviving hosts because you stretch your compute, and you still have your surviving array with that with those volumes because you stretch your storage. Right, and then what ties it all together is, is VMware HA. VMware HA is the, the kind of automation behind all of it. it. It happens or takes actions automatically without any human intervention at all. Exactly, and that's vSphere HA, that's a key point of it, is that it is not automated, it is automatic. Right. right? You configure it in advance, like if you see this type of failure, I want you to do this. Right? I want these VMs to always be on these hosts Unless they fail, then move them over, right? They're called should rules, right? There's host affinity rules. There's anti-affinity rules. It's like, if you see a storage loss in this host, I want you to reboot the VMs after 30 seconds over here, right? It allows you to pre-configure rules, either on a cluster basis or a VM basis, so that when VMware sees one of these failures, it knows exactly how to respond and exactly what to do, right? And that's what vSphere HA builds on top of stretch storage and stretch compute. Yep. And then that's, that's what makes up the MSC. Exactly. And, and one of the traditional challenges around VMSC was the storage, right? Integrating the active active storage. And, and generally that came down around to complexity, right? And, and active cluster helps with that, right? Yeah, active cluster, um, what, what really stands out to me is the fact that it, it's kind of an included feature in the array. There's no extra um, hardware to purchase. There's no extra license for it. In fact, um, it really can be set up uh, with, with four commands. You, you know, connect the arrays, you create um, some pods, um, you know, you, you give your host access to these stretched volumes, um, and, you, and, you're, and you're done. It's, it's a very simple process. Yeah, exactly, like all purity features, right? If you have a flash array, you have that feature. Now, with Active Cluster, you need two flash arrays, sure. but then you get that feature. And so, the simplicity of setting it up is a key part. The, the lack of additional hardware requirements um, to configure it makes it a lot more tenable for other customers or all kinds of customers to adopt and right. implement in different ways, too. Right, right. It's, much, it, right. It's, it's much more um, accessible now. Like there's no you know thought to I've got to buy you know extra sand switches I've got to buy another um, appliance or something that's going to allow me to stretch the 
storage, all of it's included and, and extremely um, easy to set up. Exactly. So now that like customers that looked at Active Active as nice to have but maybe not critical can do it, right? Because there isn't that additional cost. So there are a variety of ways of implementing the MSC, right? Especially from a, a storage connectivity perspective. And, and one of these methodologies is called non-uniform connectivity. So Don, what does that mean? So non-uniform is, is simply saying that for hosts that reside at, a, at one of the data centers, they're only connected to the flash array that's also at that data center. So think of it as a one-to-one -one correspondence between the host and a, and a flash array. So site one, hosts that are there connect to Flash Array 1, Site 2, hosts that reside there are connected to, only to the Flash Array at that second site. So then when like uh, I, one of the array fails, vSphere HA will see that and say, like, oh, okay, but these hosts can see the storage on the other array and my other site, I'll mm -hmm. restart them there. Exactly right. All right, Cody, let's, let's go through the, uh, the demo and take a look at, at uh, the non-uniform uh, use case first. Um, so we've got four servers, two of them are in uh, one data center, uh, two are in another, so ESX uh, five and six are one data center, five and seven, uh, excuse me, seven and eight at our second site. Um, they're connected to a stretched volume that um, on the flash array you can see is shown here. Um, two arrays attached, so we've got one at one data center, one at another data center. Um, that pod mechanism is what allows that, that data access from both flash arrays at both sites. Um, so if we simulate a failure now um, on the one of the flash arrays, I'm going to simulate a failure on the um, array that 7 and 8 are connected to, and that happens to be where uh, VM uh, 1 and 2 um, reside. We'll see uh, shortly here that the VMs become um, inaccessible. So this is a disruptive failure. The array fails, the VMs can't continue to run. So if we take a look at the data store that corresponds um, with those VMs, we'll see that you know now it's not there. But the cool thing about HA is I don't need to take any administrative action at this point. Um, HA is going to say, aha, these VMs um, can't run, they can't access storage, I need to do something about it. And it will go and identify other servers that do have access to storage and, and attempt to power things on there. So that's kind of what we're seeing at this point. Yeah, you can set specific rules inside of a cluster saying, I want you to react to this failure scenario in this way. Right. right? If you see the storage pulled out, I want you to, after a certain period of time, reboot them on other hosts that have access, right? Because essentially what we're doing here is we're pulling the rug out from those virtual machines on those hosts. And so these certain hosts no longer see that storage because there was a failure. The SAN went down, the array went down, whatever right, it right, happens right. to be. So, you know, now we can see at this point in the demo, the VMs show inaccessible in parentheses next to them, um, meaning, you know, HA has identified the fact that these aren't running, I need to do something, and now it's taking action. And it's going to very shortly show us that those VMs get powered back on and become, you know, accessible again and have the little green uh, you know, triangle indicating that they're, they're back and powered on. And the critical piece about this, right, is that while this volume exists on both arrays, mm -hmm. certain hosts only have access to that volume on one of the arrays, hence right. the non-uniform, right? They're not connected with the same paths across the entire cluster. And so if there is an array failure, then yes, those hosts lose access, those VMs shut down, mm -hmm. but then VM or very quickly will restart them on surviving hosts. And so it right. is automatically protected, but there is some downtime during this failure. Right, and that's the key. There's a, there's a slight disruption. When, when, when non-uniform is used, um, you've got the chance that the uh, loss of an array can cause a disruption um, to those VMs, but the nice part is, as you mentioned, it's an automatic recovery. It's taken care of by VMSC and HA. So with that note of some downtime, no one likes downtime, is there a way to then also prevent that from happening? Yeah, yeah, and that's where uniform connectivity comes in. And um, so for uniform, what we're saying is that each host has a connection to both flash arrays. Um, and in doing so, allows it to, to kind of ride through non-disruptively the loss of one of those two flash arrays. So from a, a host perspective, um, they just see paths fail um, versus having to you know, lose the, the VM altogether and having it get restarted. It's a, it's a much cleaner um, way to handle that failure situation from a, from a VM perspective anyway. Exactly, because the hosts are uniformly connected, right? All the hosts have the same connection to both arrays, right? It yeah. is uniform across the cluster. So if one array goes down, the host is like, oh, I just lost some paths, but I have these paths over here, right? And so they can non-disruptively survive that failure. So I think you have a demonstration here. We can walk through that. Yeah, yeah, I've got a demo of that too. So let's take a look at it. All right, so Cody, we, we saw how non-uniform um, kind of responded to a failure. Let's take a, a quick look at what uniform and, and, and what that uh, looks like when there's an array failure. So um, starting off my demo here, um, those same four hosts that we saw earlier, um, we're going to take a real quick look, though, from a VMware perspective, what the paths look like um, to, these, uh, to the data store that, that supports these four VMs. Um, so again, the four servers, um, if we jump into the 
data store and take a look at the pathing for each of these. Um, we can see that everything showing up as active. Uh, the active I/O are the um, the active optimized paths. The active without the I/O are the ones that are still um, optimized, but they're just not um, um, used because they they represent the the longer path across data centers. Um, if I s fail the array, uh, four of my paths will now show up as dead. Uh, the the surviving paths still, you know, are active, and um, you'll notice that the VMs didn't have any impact. There was no uh, power off, no power on. In fact, HA really didn't have to take a response here. This was all handled by the multipathing driver on ESX. So that's really cool. Uh, with uniform connectivity, even if an entire array goes down, or the whole SAN on one site, or something like that. Um, my VMs continue to run, right? There's no reboot or anything. Right, right. The, the, the fact that there's no disruption at all is, is really where the value is added. Um, you know, your really only extra cost, if you want to call it that, is just having to, to get that connection across arrays established. That's, that's about it. And recently, I think especially due to the simplicity of active cluster, we've been seeing more and more customers stretching their clusters and using uniform connectivity right. because of the additional resilience that it offers up. Correct, correct. That's, and that's by far the most popular way that folks are doing it. So with all this being considered, right, uh, when should a customer use VMSC? When, when is it important or critical for them to explore this option when using something like active-active replication or just using vSphere clustering in general? Right, so really the two main reasons I see uh, customers adopting this, this type of a deployment is, is one, when they want things to happen automatically. They don't want to have to make any decisions. They don't want to have to take any action when an array fails or maybe even you know, when a data center fails. Things just happen automatically with, with VMSC. Uh, the other reason that, that folks would choose this solution is when they, when they have the, the luxury, if you want to call it, of, of having data centers that are at sync distance where you know, the, the one or two milliseconds of latency between those sites doesn't in, you know, materially impact the, their, their VMs as they run. So it's sync distance customers and customers that are looking for a, an automatic response versus an automated response to failures. Yeah, because you don't have to, if there's a failure at 3.30 in the morning, you don't have to wake up and then hit a red button and do the failover or reconfigure so forth. You want VMware to do its thing, right, automatically for you. And that, that's a really powerful part about the solution is that it is automatic, right? And it's also fairly granular, right? You can, uh, if just there's one failure with one, just one volume somehow, someone removes it manually, there's some kind of script that goes crazy and removes it. VMware HA can respond to just that part of the failure and everything else that's still running will remain that way. Right. right? So there's some nice granularity around it. So if you're looking for more information around VMSC and Active Cluster, check the links that are provided alongside this video um, or of course go to purestorage.com. Thanks a lot, Don. Appreciate it. Thanks, Cody.